Hey everyone, welcome to Kitchen Party. Welcome all of our fans who are watching on Google Plus, on Twitter. Make sure you use the hashtag Kitchen Party. Hey, Renee just joined us. Yay! Perfect yeah. timing, Renee. Um, today's show is all about back to school lunches and how we can make sure that the kids are happy, healthy, and well fed. Uh, as they're as they're going through their school day, and I am so excited. One of our favorite, 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 favorite. Fa can I say favorite too many times? One of our favorite cookbook authors, uh, Catherine McCord from Welicious.com. Make sure after the show you head over there and check out her site. It's amazing. It's full of recipes for kids every single age. Um, also, wanted to remind you that this is Kitchen Party. We do a show every Thursday. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We also try to, this is like I always say try with little quotes, we also try to produce a community cookbook with every episode. So if you have a lunch recipe you want to share, go to our sponsor, which is also part of our Bakespace.com network, Cookbook Cafe, and add a recipe. You can go to the link, bit.ly slash KP Lunch and you should add your recipe and then we will publish it along with this video in our app so we're really excited about that so before before we uh, before we move any further let me make sure I get the um, the the group to introduce themselves Jeff and Renee you want to start um, and then we'll we'll get to um, Catherine right after uh, my name is Jeff Alp I'm the food writer for the Tampa Tribune and blogger at tbo.com and my mom used to make great lunches for me at school <laughs> I'm Renee Lynch. I'm a writer and editor at the LA Times. I work across a number of sections, including food and health. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting tips for packing my own lunch, not just my kids' lunch. <laughs> Aww. And I'm Babette Peppa, the founder of Bakespace.com. And I do not have children. Uh, Jeff, real quickly before we move forward, tell me what it was like because you just put your son into his first year of college. Yeah, so I ripped off both my arms this week. And then I <laughs> emptied my wallet and left all my blood in Fort Myers, Florida. But other than that, it was a great week. Yeah, but now you don't have to make lunches anymore. Um, you know, that's a responsibility that leaves you at a certain age anyway. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I miss doing that. I miss making him breakfast and lunches. But he relieved me of that duty some time ago, usually right around the time that they realize that they're in their teens and uh, they don't need food unless it's at about 10 p.m. at night. Or maybe that they can open up the book, like the bag, and like put the Oreos and stuff like that in, and you won't know. Yeah, he uh, he <laughs> led a secret food life for the last four or five years, and I'm pretty glad I don't know about it. <laughs> you were hilarious. Secret food life. <laughs> so, Catherine, do you want to do a quick introduction? Tell us a little bit about um, your background and sort of get you get us up to the point where you got your book, your cookbook deal. Just so we can kind of for those of you for those of who are watching who are new. Um, or are not familiar with her story, maybe we can um, just kind of get a little bit of the background. Oh, we got a long story. <laughs> That's okay, we got an hour. <laughs> we got time. Um, wow, let's see. Uh, I grew up in Kentucky, and um, my grandparents were really into like farming and growing all their own food, and so I spent a lot of time picking pole beans down in you know, the basement and freezing everything, and um, then I ended up, uh, I started modeling when I was 13, and I modeled through my teens and 20s. And um, I always wanted to go to culinary school. It was a real dream. And I was living in New York City, blocks from the World Trade Center during 9-11, and sort of lived through that experience. And the day of 9-11, I was supposed to see the Institute of Culinary Education in New York City. And um, that was sort of my epiphany that I was like, I need to you know, change my life. I had been hosting a, a bunch of TV shows and um, modeling and acting and whatever and I, um, I ended up going back to culinary school every night for a year and graduated and um, I, I worked in a bunch of restaurants and catering companies and I couldn't find exactly what I wanted to do because I think for a lot of people that cook or love cooking you know the obvious is to work in a restaurant um, but now it's kind of amazing you know you have there's so many other opportunities for people that love to cook. Um, so I started when I had my son, uh, we had always shopped at the Hollywood Farmers Market and bought most of our food and I really knew that I wanted to make homemade baby food. So I went online and 
um, just started looking for different homemade baby food recipes and couldn't find much information on how to make kids great eaters, how to make homemade food, how to store it, freeze it, you know, so and so, so on and so forth. So I started taking a picture every day and, and documenting in a blog um, that I found the name Weelicious, and it just quickly grew, and sort of as my son grew, and then I had my daughter, and um, just as my, my family has grown through the years, so has, the, you know, this, like, journey into food and eating and being a mom and trying to pull it off and um, really just, you know, eating sort of nutritious, um, you know, fruits, vegetables, like whole foods uh, with plenty of bacon and chocolate thrown in, just because that's the only fair way you're speaking kitchen parties language. <laughs> it's all about balance. I hope this doesn't come off as creepy, but will you be my mommy? <laughs> you should see the YouTube comments we get. I bet. I will be your mommy. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so then, so um, t for, for this cookbook, my first cookbook is uh, Weelicious, One Family, One Meal. Um, which is all about super simple, you know, straightforward, fun recipes for the entire family. Um, but Weelicious Lunches started when my son was two and a half years old. I started taking a picture every day of his school lunch um, and posting it on Facebook and Twitter. And it was just sort of something fun I did uh, for me. And then, you know, if I missed a day, people were like, where's lunch? I need lunch. I need to see the picture. Um, so when I was um, pitching my first book, I pitched this book too. And, they, you know, so here we are. Is it was it exciting to get your first cookbook deal? Were you was it was it a surprise? No, I mean I had um I had worked for a year on the proposal because I was really really passionate about it. So um, the proposal was like 50 pages. Um, I'd done tons of research into the space and um, and uh, so I pitched it to the 13 different publishers. Um, but but you know you, you pitch it you, you when you ever you have the opportunity to go pitch a cookbook and then you actually wait to see what happens it's a very different different story so I was really lucky um, and I, I've been in good hands at Harper Collins at William Morrow and have an editor I have a crush on and <laughs> kind of a love story. Oh, we won't we won't tell anyone. Um, you know, I lots of the folks who are watching are food bloggers, and a lot of them have uh, dreams of turning their blog into a cookbook or turning their favorite family recipes into a cookbook. Um, w was it something that you had always wanted to do? Yeah, but I think the difference of like. I mean, I've been collecting cookbooks since I was a kid. I mean, like jur junior league of everywhere. Um, and so then, you know, you think, oh, I want to write a cookbook, I want to write a cookbook. Um, but then but then it really became, like, I'm get, I want to do this, I'm going to do this. But then, of course, you get the deal, like, you're like, okay, you get to write a cookbook. And then you <laughs> have to write a cookbook. <laughs> and that whole experience is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's and, and, and for me, I wrote two cookbooks basically in three years. So it, it's, been, it's been an interesting process. That's amazing. Did, did you find your focus changing as your children were growing older as you were writing? Yeah, that's such a great point. Because um, I mean, their tastes change so much, you know? Yeah, but you know what? I really firmly believe that, especially with children, that it's about exposure and education. Because I think that, you know, all of our tastes change, you know, through the weeks, months, days, whatever. Um, and I think there's something also very tricky about kids because like a kid will be like, I don't want that, I'm not gonna eat that. And then all of a sudden, you know, they have to go to the bathroom, like go poop an hour later and you're like, oh yeah, they didn't want to eat that because they have to go to the bathroom. Um, so it's like, I think that there's so many different things that are involved um, with, you know, feeding kids. Um, and I think that's an excellent point. Um, I, I, it's not something you think about often, but uh, if you've seen a public school bathroom lately, it is not a pleasant experience, <laughs> and it's a deep concern for some children. Um, and they do. They actually they have to limit their intake sometimes. They do that sort of naturally anyway because of the rhythm of whatever their day is. So, um, you know, you made a great point, though, I think, in the intro about um, containers. And, you know, we, we talk about kids' lunches and everything. We talk about nutrition and color and taste and flavor, and that's all great, and we'll talk about those tonight. But, um, you know... 
these are really novice users of fingers and hands for the most part about when you're making a kid's lunch. And yeah, they like to rip into things, but not, you know, time is of essence. They don't get a lot of time to eat these, these lunches. What have you found in terms of what works and what doesn't? Well, I mean, I really started like asking teachers and studying school lunch in general when my son first started preschool. And it was his very first day that I was, I walked in and I got to stay there with him. He was only two and a half years old, like almost three. And there were 14 kids sitting there and like 10 of them had these like containers, tops, paper bags, um, white food, like white, you know, white peeled apples, cheese puffs, white sandwich. And then there were like a few other kids that had these sort of bento box containers. And it, immediately they were able to open it, see all the variety. And it was like, it was such an epiphany for me that I was like, you, that's part of the problem. You know, you're like Tommy may stick his hand in the paper bag and pull out the cookie. And then he's chatting with his friends and the, you know, the, the bell rings and he never even gets to eat his lunch. So I think that, um, you know, as far as containers going, uh, it's so nice to have something like a bento box kind of container where, sure. where I mean, I send my husband to work with it. And he gets the exact same lunch sort of as my as my kids do, and and getting to see everything is is really nice. And you go, you didn't eat your crust. <laughs> I look at it, I'm like, I'm never making that for you again. Ever. So where do people um, uh, go get a, a bento box style lunchbox? There are several companies that make them that I love. Um, I, I, on Instagram, I take pictures of a Planet Box. It's a stainless steel container, dishwasher safe. Um, just super easy, comes in one piece. Uh, it has a higher price point. Uh, Laptop Lunches is another company I like. Um, four compartments, they all pull out. You can put them in the dishwasher um, on the top rack. Um, it's more colorful and vibrant. You know, it, it really comes to personal choice. There, there are a lot of companies making bento style lunch boxes now. Hey, before we move any further, I just want to give a shout out to the folks on Google Plus who are watching. I just want to go through a few names, and we do have some questions from folks. We are going to get to those for sure. Uh, Emily Roach said, "Hey, what's up, everyone?" Uh, she's talking. She has a question about suggestions on helping parents get ahead of the game, which we will come to in a second. I just want to make sure everyone is. Uh, Tam Tamara DiCapria also checked in. Uh, Melissa Taylor checked in. Kim Watkinson. Lots of our locals, our regulars have checked in. Chris uh, Neuskern, also Robert Greenwood, uh, Michelle Jenkins. Did I just say Michelle Jenkins? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. And then also on Twitter, we got the folks who also checked in. Um, uh, Mary, uh, Mary Gourmet on Twitter also retweeted us earlier. Um, uh, I got a cat sneezing right now. <laughs> Disney Deborah also checked in. G uh, delightful Rip. Repass? Is that how you say it, Jeff? Repast. Repass. Repass. That's for foodies. Also checked in. Uh, Sarah999 um, also checked in. So we're going to go back through the questions, but I just want to make sure you guys know that we know you're watching. And if you have any questions, we do want to give away two cookbooks, I'm pretty sure, right? So, so uh, Catherine, how do you want to give away the two cookbooks? Do you want them to tweet something to you? Do you yeah. want them to... Oh, yeah. Right. Tweet me. Definitely. It's at Weelicious. Great. So at Weelicious, send her a tweet and use the kitchen party hashtag. Now, what is the question that you want them to answer, or or do you want them to? Well, I I like to be inspired, so I would say, and this isn't there's no right or wrong to this. I would say, you know, what's your favorite lunch? What's what do you like to do for lunch? I'm gonna get hungry just looking That's at that. That's right. <laughs> so hey, what are you guys drinking by the way tonight? You know, I was running so late, I'm drinking absolutely nothing. It's a very sad state boo, of affairs. Boo, <laughs> boo, boo. That's, that's not kitchen party, man. That's I know. Just like, that's like, I there's no party there. I don't even know you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up for it. I'm drinking uh, Sweetwater uh, Brewing's uh, Motorboat Ale. Wow. Nice. You can read, in, read into that however you like. Hey, I appreciate hey, that. Catherine, are you, are you okay. drinking? Gorgeous glass of rosé. I have a quiet house, which never happens. You know, the best part is you're using the dainty finger. <laughs> I took a little of that pinky thing. You're, I know using, you're using the rosé finger and, and forefinger there in the I am drinking a fine rosé. <laughs> Just interpreting hand gesture. There you go. Like a trumpet. 
like a trumpet. You know, I'm I'm doing the gin and tonic again, by the way, in our in our traditional kitchen party mason jar. Um, but I realized today when I made my drink, I only had this much left of gin and tonic mm. of the whole bottle, or not gin and wow. tonic, gin. And I realized <laughs> every time I go through another bottle with kitchen party, I'm like, I have a problem. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. At a certain point, you're only doing Google Hangouts as a crutch for your. <laughs> <laughs> no, your problem is just that you need more gin. That's the problem. <laughs> You know, Renee has a point. <laughs> Renee has a point. All right, guys. So, um, uh, so let let's start with some tips because people are going to start tweeting some inspirational stuff for lunch and what they like to eat for lunch. Um, while they're doing that, um, what are what are like new parents, like parents that are just sending their kids to kindergarten? Because I know your website actually breaks down each of the like the the children's group, and I love. I think that is just brilliant, by the way, because parents can go right in, check it out, and be like, "This fits my child's age group." So yeah. maybe we can start with like the younger kids and all that kind of excitement of, you know, when you're not there for the first time watching your kids eat. I can imagine you're probably it's a nightmare. It's sad because those are the days that yeah, I think it does because they they're just at school like looking around. They're like, "Am I supposed to be eating lunch right now? Am I supposed to be talking? You know, what's supposed to be happening?" Um, you know, the one thing I will say about the lunch is, like, I think every child, it's so di different. Like, I know three-year-olds, they could probably eat Jeff under the table. You know what I mean? Like, to take it down. Well, there's a standard. <laughs> um, so yeah, but they I, can't keep up with me on beer. I will drop a toddler, let me tell you. <laughs> so I would say, I mean, it's more about knowing your child and what they you know what they like and enjoy and you know whatever like my usually the fruits and vegetables always come home I mean are eaten with both of my kids because they both that's just like what they like um, but you know so you'll you know you, you know you know what shape size um, to put in you know for your child but it's you know when once you're getting started like the most important thing to me is balance like that you have every meal has a fruit a vegetable a carbohydrate and a protein because I always feel like if you put that in lunch you've sort of done your job you, you you're relieved of the guilt you didn't do but well by your kids I feel so bad because I don't have children, so I always like I always imagine this like fantasy world of like your children getting you up in the morning and being like I'm gonna make them this crazy like J M Hirsch who is the AP food writer, he has this like crazy awesome ability to like make lunch the night before or dinner and whoop it into like something fabulous. Um, maybe I'm just gonna be a very lazy parent. <laughs> no, no, someone came up to me at I went to Barnstall. You, you'll know that. Um, if you you know Barnstall over here, it's a yeah. they do wine nights last week, and this woman, this girl, came up to me and she said, "Oh my God, you're Wheelicious! I love Wheelicious! I mean, I hate kids. I, I really don't like them, but I like Wheelicious." <laughs> I don't see a problem there. <laughs> so, but my point is that like the you know Wheelicious, the recipes are like really it's it's they're super simple and easy. Like you don't have to have kids mm -hmm. by any means. I mean, the, the book is just as much written for you know. Big kids, adult, you know, what age, whatever age group. Um, the point being, like anyone, even if they don't cook, can pull off these recipes. Right. I always yes. found when I was making my son's lunches that uh, back when he actually loved me, uh, <laughs> I, I remember that um, it felt like there was some sort of cold war of parenting going on. Because um, and it happened at the birthday parties too, but it kind of extended into lunch on a daily basis. Because you always were worried that, as you write in the book, you write it in the book is like, is my is my kid going to go to school and then come back home and tell me, you know, Max is having the Rolls Royce and I'm eating a Kia, um, <laughs> and I'm wondering how you deal with the the mental side of it because I think it's an emotional thing to make lunches for your child and then kind of send them off in the world and just assume that they're going to have enough time, they're going to eat them, they're going to lick their fingers, they will think. My mom is the best mom in the world. You know, how do you how do you deal with it emotionally? I, well, I think that you start by getting them involved. Like, you, it's you know, it's the same reason I think that you have like picky eaters when they're. I think a lot of kids become picky because they're like, I don't know what this is. This does not look familiar. This is not in my you know my space. 
I, I don't, I'm not eating this. It's just, you know, the resistance. So even with lunch, like, I, I try to make something with my kids or I'll give them, like, hey, I'm going to make, you know, rice, do you want beans on it or sesame seeds or, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll try to include them somehow because I think that once they have this sort of ownership over their food and knowledge about what it is or just, like, a hand in it, um, whether you, you know, just take them to the grocery and like, look, you can pick out any fruit or vegetable that you want and put, we'll put it at lunch this week. Because then, you know, by the time they open it, they're like, you know, I think my, I mean, my son often, it feels like very cool. I mean, he taught half of his class what dragon fruit was. Because they were like, what's that purple thing with all the black seeds? He's like, it's dragon fruit. You know, I mean, but it, it's not, it's not, there's no even showing off. It's just like, it is. It's just he knows what it is and he eats it and he likes it. So mm -hmm. um, I think that it just comes down to all that, you know, knowledge is power. That has got to be the coolest fruit to take to school, right? It's like, I got dragon fruit. <laughs> pretty, it's pretty awesome and it tastes pretty awesome. And it's it, so looks like a, it looks like a hand grenade from Shrek. You know? <laughs> I mean, it, it's an awesome, know. awesome fruit. I just put one in my refrigerator in case anyone doesn't know because it was a bad thing. Oh, here. Okay, let's, let's all be nosy. Oh my god, I love that refrigerator. I love looking in uh, refrigerators. Right? Do you understand? That's like two, that's like four of my refrigerators. Now, my, my, my refrigerator, oh yeah, and then look, I already made lunch for tomorrow. Um, Can we come over? <laughs> We're not that far. Once again, I ask, will you be my mommy? <laughs> I'm gonna say, will you, can, you can discuss it with my husband. My lunch mommy. My lunch mommy. That's all I want is the lunch. Hey, we, we do have a question from Tamara DiCaprio. She, or DiCaprio. she says, do you have a go-to item for school lunches, or is variety the key to all? I would say I, I've, my kids have ne kids and husband have never eaten the same lunch in the past you know three three and a half years four years probably since I've been making lunch you know like regularly. Um, I think variety is really important. The one thing that I do is I keep a, a list of ten foods that I know everybody loves and I keep them on hand at all times. And I'll just mix match them. But it's just it's my way of like knowing. You know, as long as I have them on hand, then I know that I can pull off lunch quickly. You said, I, I want to make sure I, I heard that right, you said they never eat the same lunch twice? No. So every day is something different? Yeah. Will you be my mommy? <laughs> <laughs> but you repeat, right? Like, you eventually, it comes around, and like, you like you, you start over the 30-day cycle, right? It's probably like a yeah, it's like a ninety day cycle. I mean, shock. I mean, like the Wheelish's lunches have one hundred and sixty recipes, I and mean, you you know, it's you'd be shocked like how many things you can come up with. And I'm also a huge proponent of of dinner becomes lunch. Like there, you know, three four days a week, whatever was for dinner the night before will get somehow turned into lunch the next day. I always make like a little extra. So we do have a question. So Emily Roach uh, asked this earlier before our show started. She said she recently pinned an article about make-ahead lunches, and it was repinned over a thousand times, which I think is awesome. I have like I can never get things to a thousand. It's crazy. Uh, parents are clearly interested in getting prep, uh, getting prepped ahead of time. So what suggestions would you give to help them get ahead of the game? It's kind of an open-ended question, but. No, 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 not at all. Um, I freeze everything. I freeze every time I make waffles, pancakes, cookies, bars. Yeah, I can show you my freezer too. Um, it, uh, I freeze everything because that way you just take out like a few cookies, and that way you're making homemade. You're not just buying boxed. So freezing things because I'll make pancake sandwiches, waffle sandwiches. Um, it's just a, it, it soups. It's a great strategy for school lunch. Um, and then as far as like the night before goes, like, I mean, I made that this afternoon because I was cooking today. Um, but I I'll almost always the night before, like do my fruit, my vegetable, no, and, and then at least know what I'm going to make. Um, like Thursday, I think yesterday, the day before, I made a grilled cheese. So I had the fruit, vegetable, and the dessert kind of ready. I mean, not kind of ready, ready. And then I just made the grilled cheese while I was making breakfast. And it, it took two seconds. Now, how I would never think to make a warm sandwich or what I often think of as a warm sandwich for lunch. How does that work? And that's honestly one of the biggest questions I get, like, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I think that, that comes down to preference. Some kids are like, I want my meal cold. Some are like, I have to have a hot lunch. My kids could care less. I mean, they'll, it's cheese and bread. They're thrilled. 
So you just you you make the grilled cheese sandwich. Do you have to like let it cool down, or yeah. I think of it, it won't get so it won't get soggy. How do you? Yeah. Ha, uh huh. I put it. On, I just made the grilled cheese, and while I, we were eating breakfast, I put it on a cooling rack, mm -hmm. just to bring it to room temperature, and then boxed it up. And That's a great up. use of a cooling rack. Right. That is, I, I mean, everyone has one of those things. <laughs> Usually for like, you know, I only bring it out for like the cupcakes. You know, Rob Greenwood, uh, who is at Life as Dad One on Twitter, says, "How do you get the kids to eat more veggies?" Again, That's a great one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I started taking my kids to the farmers market every Sunday when they were babies, and just I always let them whatever you want. You know, the farmers will give them, or the mar you know, the vendors will give them free things. Uh, same thing with the grocery. We have an edible garden. So, you know, I, I think that just the more that you get kids knowing what vegetables are, I think it becomes, like, very cool, like planting kale and basil to make pesto. And, and we got a bunch of green beans, and so we'll, like, pick green beans while we're walking to the car in the morning. Um, I mean, look, it is the beauty of living in California or living in nice weather. Um, but, again, it's just exposure. I, I think it's super important. You know, I see parents and, and the kids want to do exactly what the parents do, you know, even professionally or, you know, let's say the dad loves doing puzzles. So the son loves doing puzzles. So it's the same thing. Like if dad, like my dad, my husband right now, I was almost a Freudian slip. My husband right now is vegan before six. Thank you, Mark Pittman. Vegan before six. I'm a vampire vegan. after seven, but yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> He'll eat a grass-fed steak at like 6.05. Yeah. <laughs> but now my son is like, I want to be a vegan too. Good wow. times. What about... Um, uh, I don't even uh, cold hard cash, by the way. Kids respect cash. <laughs> Bribe them through the vegetables. High dollars, 20s, 50s, 10s. Yeah. I think that's going to be my children. Too. <laughs> uh, also on Twitter, we have um, a couple people checked in. SP Chronicles, who is, uh, I think, Sh Sherry Marsh, said, hey, we let's just love in the kitchen party going on. I don't know why, for some reason, every time I want to say kitchen party, I have to, like, do, like, the hand jazz or something. And that's the, that's the signature <laughs> move. That's why you have to do it. It's a signature move. It's a gin and tonic. We're, we're going to tra tra trademark it. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous woman doing crazy things with her hands. Um, my fav, my favorite lunch to pack are the mini quiches I make my daughter. You, what's your favorite um, lunch to pack? I, I say right now, it's my my kids both love sushi sandwiches. They'll eat them any which any filling that I put in them. There, it's just lot. You you take a piece of bread for anyone if I'm. Anyway, you take a piece of bread and you use a rolling pin and roll it out sort of flat, and then you can put um, any filling that you ever dreamed of. Let's just say peanut butter and jelly, and then you roll it up like sushi and you cut it into little sushi pieces. Oh my god, I love that! It's really cute. <laughs> what about um, um, parents? I'm sure you get this from some parents who say, "Well, we started out our kids. We've had some bad eating habits. They've maybe had too much junk food. Maybe not enough." veggies, how do we like start this, how do we reboot this system? How do we start over in a better way? What do you do? What kind of boot camp do you put them in? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, again, I, I think that if you, if you want them to sort of join the program, first you have to be a like, good role model. Like you can't be eating the Big Mac and expect them to want the kale smoothie. Uh, so that's probably a pretty good start. Uh, you know, lead by example. Uh, and then just adding, you know, one thing at a time. I think it really, it's that game of going to the market and being like, okay, you can pick anything you want in the produce aisle. What do you want to pick? And let's go find a recipe together. Because at the end of the day, whether your kid is like 2 or 18, often they want to like hang out with their, you know, they want that bonding time. So sometimes just like finding, finding that food and deciding to cook it together or make something with it, even something really simple, um, can be a bonding activity and I think it just it makes kids sometimes more open-minded. Uh, and if not that, change the way, change the way of vegetable because that tends to be the one kids don't like. Like if your kids don't want to eat steamed kale, try kale chips or you can put it into like green lemonade or something like that. What about stripping out some of the junk food that maybe and and uh, maybe candy and junk food that they've eaten a little bit too much of? How do you wean them off that? What would you um, recommend? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just it's just taking you know, I mean, 
I think that when, once kids understand, like, foods aren't good for their bodies, like, I said to my son when he was about three, three and a half, like, I remember, it was a, you know, I think it was a birthday, like, you know, um, food coloring is not good for your body. And since that moment, my, my kids will eat anything, but, like, my son will not eat food coloring. Any, any we've times because he's like he knows it's not good for his body, um, and so I think that when when they understand this, the connection between feeling good and eating good and what's good for their body and you know teaching kids that you know your body is your machine and it needs to be able to run and have you know be, have a full tank so you need to give it lots of good foods to make it run well. So, so guys, I'm, I love that. I'm like, I'm thinking of myself. I'm like, oh, it's not good for me. I should eat that that pink cupcake. That's what we want. Hey, uh, uh, Gabby actually tuned in from What's Cooking. Uh, what's Gabby yeah, cooking? Gabby. Um, she wants. First of all, we have to tell her thank Gabby you. Gabby packs nothing but avocado in everything. By the that's way. true. Uh, that is that's natural coloring too. Uh, but that's how we actually got connected to you. So I want to make sure we know. Gabby is the lady. You gotta get everybody your needs absolutely avocados. It is the most rocking cookbook. Yes, go to Amazon right now and buy that cookbook for sure. Um, she's terrific. She's absolutely terrific. I couldn't believe how many recipes of, of with avocado you can make. Um, uh, and I'm not. I don't even like avocado, but I love all the recipes. Um, we have Tammy DiCaprio uh, Thoughtsgasm on Twitter said, "How do you compete in school lunches?" Okay, how do you compete in school lunches, trades, if your kid is gluten-free? Ooh, this is, I'm so happy you asked that. Um, so, when I, that, allergies are an enormous, enormous thing um, at Wheelish just because nowadays so many kids have egg, nuts, you know, gluten allergies. So, in the book, I have a copy here, um, I made, and it really was like the 11th hour that I did this, um, I made, I, I made a chart that has, let's see if I can come up, um, four, it's four pages and it has every recipe, whether it's gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, um, or nut-free. So that to help um, families, you know, if you have a, a child with gluten intolerance, that you can still, you, there's tons and tons and tons of recipes in the book. I love that. I think that's very cool that you can go through the chart. Uh, Robert Greenwood on uh, Google Plus says, "My son eats the same lunch every day." I think his son is just like me. I once I find something I really love, I will eat it every day. There is a there is a crispy kale salad in um, Gelson's right now, and oh, every day this. for dinner. I've heard about that salad. It's it's legendary it, now. Oh, yeah. it, is so good. It has feta and lemon, and it's just so good. And every time we go to eat dinner, I'm always like, "Can we go to Gelson's? Can we get that thing?" <laughs> Eric's like, "Stop! You're gonna make me sick." I was like, "No, no, no you don't understand. It's like five ninety nine for this big, huge thing, and tell him not to put the cheese in it, so it's lighter." <laughs> it's like the key. But I think Robert, I think your son and I are like our soulmates. Uh, Chris Newskern also said, "My son would eat." peanut butter sandwiches every day, but if I put a cucumber or red pepper, he usually eats them. Wish I could get him to eat more fruit. Do you have any suggestions about fruit? I think it's about finding which fruits he does like, because I think that, you know, it depends where you live and what, you know, what you have available, because I've even, I've tasted blueberries that taste awful. You know, it's, it's eating seasonally definitely helps because you know that the food, fruits are you know, strawberries should be in September, not necessarily in January. Um, and and try continuing always to eat a variety until um, he finds, you know, fruits that he does enjoy. But I have heard of plenty of kids that just hate fruit. No, no matter which way you serve it, do it. You can always try smoothies or popsicles. Some kids, you know, it's like how some people react to cilantro. You know, some people have taste receptors that are different from others. And I know I, I kind of got frustrated with my son at times because we had a, we had a one-bite rule. You had to take one bite. If you didn't like it after that, then, then move on. And it worked like a charm. Yeah. Um, but there were some things that he just didn't react well to. And I thought, you know, there are lots of other vegetables and lots of other fruits. He doesn't have to have this, you know. And uh, it's kind of hard to kind of give into that because you just want this to be the most healthy offspring on the earth. And uh, and you know we're parents and their children. We tell them what to do, but it, it's it, they they do have their own individual likes and dislikes and flavors. You know? And and there's a lot to be said for like 
the guy that shoots um, all my all the Wheelicious videos, like, is the pickiest eater ever. And we've been working together for now six years, and I'm, I've always like pushed food on him. And he, you know, he's he now will eat like he he detested asparagus. It took us two years to get him to take a bite, and like it's like slowly but surely he's like, I think I like asparagus now. You know, I think there's something also in the mindset of like, well, my my mother didn't like it, so why would I like it? Or, you know, like olives. I never liked olives. I write about it all the time. Um, and my daughter, when she was little, 18 months, two years old, uh, we had a pint of olives here. My father-in-law, big olive eater. And she sat and ate the entire container of olives. And I was like, oh, my God. And over the years, she has, because she wants them. And, you know, I always want to be the parent to be like, okay, I'll eat it too. Um, and now I love olives. <laughs> I crave them. It's really cute. On Twitter, we have Alicia Bortz, which is at Bortzy05, says, I wish I could get more creative with leftovers, but I love soups. What do you put in your pancake sandwiches? Oh, um, usually I love cream cheese and either apple butter or uh, sometimes peanut butter, preserves, um, Nutella. Saying um, any you know any kind of like sweeter spread you know works really well. I like cream cheese and like strawberry preserves is pretty darn good together. Oh, that's a great combination. Yeah, because that way you get some protein too. You had me at Nutella. <laughs> I just like it's my I at least, I eat like a five year old. It is the worst thing in my family. Everyone is always like, gosh, uh, the the nine year old will take mac and cheese, <laughs> and so will the forty year old, and <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, we also have uh, we let's see you you mommy, which is just the letter U, also tuned in and said tell everyone basically saying great ideas for school lunches, and also linked to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for sharing the channel. Um, uh, SP Chronicles says, love the sushi sandwiches too. By the way, it's pronounced Kerry. Oh, well, it is C E R Y, so you got to give me a break. <laughs> People, it is the gin and tonic. Come on, um, get it right, baby. <laughs> yes, hooky, hooky. Oh, uh, you're a one to talk. And then Tammy uh, DiCaprio on Twitter says, nothing keeps things cold like old school foil. Plus, they make cool fake braces after. <laughs> nice. I, I like that. I want to go have lunch with her because I just want to yeah. see I just want to see that. Um, <laughs> also, I'm wondering if we should pick a winner because uh, we have about uh, 15 minutes left to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. And then also maybe some, some practical tips on storage and um, any advice you have to people who are trying. You know, the new year just started, so... Um, do, you, do can you see your Twitter stream from where yeah, you're at? Yeah, I, I got it. I, I got it on my phone. Do you want to pick a um, pick a winner? Just retweet it and just say you won. Okay, and, and then we'll know. <laughs> Whatever's easy. No pressure. <laughs> and so I'll I'll have Jeff and Renee answer a question. So do you guys pack your own lunches, Jeff and Renee? Or do you guys? Do you, I mean, at the papers, do you guys? Um, you know, really? I am um, trying to pack my lunch more and more because. Work can just get so busy, and I'm sure Jeff can attest to this. You never know what's going to happen, that if you haven't planned for lunch, you get to be sitting there at 3 o'clock and not have anything to eat. So I'm trying to do a better job of bringing lunch every day. But I have to tell you, I need to – I think the trick is maybe doing it the night before. You were talking about prepping because I try to do it in the morning, and I'm running late, and then it never gets done, and it's bad. I, I don't. I have to admit that I don't. I first of all, I find eating in the newsroom one of the most depressing environments on the planet. Um, something about artificial light and watching people that I don't want to be around when I'm eating it, it, it makes me hate food. So I, I don't. And there's I and I'm I'm attracted by all the things that are outside of the building because there's a lot of great food. And I, I mean, I like my food, but um, no, I, I'm usually uh, I'm an outdoor eater, not an indoor eater. Also, I just want to let the folks know, I was looking through the Twitter well, maybe handle. That's what I need to do. Maybe I need to stop packing. Sorry. Oh, that was weird. No, don't, don't, don't do that because it's, it's extremely expensive and uh, unwise and fun. So <laughs> by all means, don't do that because you'll enjoy your life and you'll be away from your colleagues. So. Hey, hey, Renee, do you know on my screen you talked but your mouth did not move? I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> We should do. We should do an all ventriloquist show. <laughs> or change voices. 
Make, oh, yeah. make the we should all have puppets. We should all bring like little puppets because I have like a chef puppet. We'll bring a chef puppet on. And yeah, that's, hey, that uh, was just Jeff, stupid. Jeff, what did you? What is your son? Love? What did did? I don't mean. I know that you said he went to college. Yeah, he's still alive. But thank you. Yeah, yeah he uh, <laughs> he uh, you know he was really simple. You know he really uh, he liked. Um, he liked the PB and J and stuff, you know. I mean, I would pack him celery and things like that, and he would eat some of it. But uh, you know, he got. It wasn't that he was picky. It was just that the the uh, the amount of time they have to eat these days is like microscopic. It's crazy. And, and if you're at the front of the line, you might get something different than if you're at the back of the line. Yeah. Um, you might have a totally different experience, even if you bring your own food at the back of the line, because it takes so long to get through the line and get your drink and get your seat and and all that. And I really. Um, I worry about what we're what we're teaching kids sort of non-verbally about food through their lunchtime experience because, um, you know, I'm sorry, 25 minutes isn't enough. You know, um, it's it's kind of crazy about that. Yeah, it it, it is. I'm, I have, my son has said to me like especially this son, summer at camp, he's gone to a bunch of different camps, and a few times I've been like, what happened? Because he usually eats 80 percent of his lunch, right. and I'll say to him, you know, what happened? You didn't eat this, and he'll be like, I didn't have time, and I. I can tell you it breaks my heart like because I know that they're like their minds are going so hard and fast yeah. their bodies um, I mean I, sometimes when I pick him up from school I'll let him have a second chance at his lunch right which he'll almost always you know just eat up in two seconds because they're just yeah. especially for younger kids I think that they're just so busy there's just so much happening um, that you know adults like we eat um, for you know, we're sad. We're happy. You know, we're much more emotional eaters. Where kids really do eat to fill their bodies, and then they're just sort of done. Well, there was the one year. I mean, and, and there's even you even have to think differently versus what time of day that eat because there was one year where he ate at ten thirty in the morning, which is I mean, only a couple hours after what? they get there, and then he's got to make it through the rest of the day. And then there was another year where it was like closer to one one fifteen, and I'm like, what are you doing? Why, right. why even bother doing that if you're not going to, you know, let them eat in their classrooms or something. I know you're supposed to do it in the cafeteria, but, you know, you even have to consider what time of day and what proteins you pack and what cold things they pack, you know? Totally. Totally. It's such a great point. It's such a great point that people don't really even think about. And, and I really stress to parents, like, don't get, you know, if that lunchbox comes back full, don't, yeah, I, I would say, you know, did you not like this? Right. Was there something different? And then back to the PB and J com um, comment because, like, I love PB and J. It's like my uh, probably sure. my favorite thing in the world. But I have a whole PB and J chapter in the book because uh, I I, I want to show you. You know, you can make so many different PB and J. Right. If you love those flavors, and it, it is sweet with a great protein. And there's so many recipes you can make with PB and J. And I actually thought it was a sign of his maturity because at a certain point he was like, "Listen, stop being creative." Just give me my lunch. Let's move on with our lives. You know, and it wasn't that he didn't like them. It was just like this is not this is your focus, not my focus. My focus is got not getting it taken away from me and not getting my you know my ass beat in lunchroom. And after that, I'm cool. I'll eat when I get home. It'll all be all right. Mom will bring me some fries. You know, whatever. Um, but it's you know they have a whole universe that is outside of of our perception of it. And I I, I respect the fact they get any sustenance at all. Do you now for all three of you? What do you remember when you were a kid? What your favorite thing or what your mom would, or dad would pack for you, Renee? I my dad invented. I think he invented. He would make. Um, uh, he would toast a, a English muffin. That's my dog. Sorry. And he would put. We would do um, cream cheese and then sometimes strawberry. I thought my dad invented that sandwich. <laughs> and then he would also take cream cheese and uh, diced up green olives. With the strawberries? With, just, no, 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 not with the strawberries. Oh, I'm sorry. So, like, one day would be a sweet sandwich, and then the next day would be a savory sandwich. Olive. And he, we were told we we're we we're a total olive family. And he would sometimes it would be Kalamata olives or those uh, those like those olive olive oil cured olives, and that was like my favorite. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah, it was so good. Renee, your face lights up when you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute. Uh, Jeff, what about you? Oh, rack of lamb. Totally rack of <laughs> what? lamb. I uh. <laughs> No, I, you know, I, I got to tell you, my mom was the conventional '70s mom, you know, and we had, we had, uh, we had uh, bologna sandwiches and peanut butter and jelly and all that, you know. Back then, it wasn't, you know, it was the pre, 
sort of bento era, and it was it was very much paper bags and whatnot. But I went to Catholic school, so you know, usually my ears were bloody from the nuns, so I really wasn't that hungry. That's um, so sad. Yeah, it was. Sad. I remember my lunch lady, Mrs. Green. She was great. She had teeth like a horse. It was awesome. <laughs> but um, you know, that pizza in the in the in the it, it was a good thing she packed my lunches because the pizza in the lunchroom. I wouldn't. I wouldn't wish on you know Al Qaeda or anything. It was just a bad, bad scene. Yeah. You know, when I went to school, I don't remember my parents making me. I don't remember ever having a lunch. Like I, rem I mean, I remember buying lunch at like going through the line, and burritos when I hit high school, and they had offered burritos. That was like what I'd get every single day. It was kind of ridiculous. But I, I really do not remember, and my mother's going to kill me when she watches this. <laughs> She's going to be like, what are you talking about? I made you lunch all the time. I'm like, I do not remember it at all. I do not remember my, my youth for some reason. I'm like oh. I'm sheltering it out. But yeah, no. I, wow. I remember being very independent and very like I would get my cash, and I would go to the line, and I would buy my food. And, I would, and I, my dad would not, and my stepmother would not let me drink sodas that had any caramel coloring. I don't mm -hmm. I don't know why they picked that. So I would use school as my opportunity to like eat what I wanted to eat. Wow. And um, I know it's kind of ridiculous, but uh, it's like the prison yard, you know, I'll trade you a seven up, yo, for Mr. Pitt. You wanna give a pit, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Catherine, what about you? Did your parents make you lunch? No, I went I went to a school where we we had cafeteria food, but I um I, I um, my dedication in my book was to the lunch ladies because starting in about third grade, I used to um, I would spend all my recess with them, and I would sit in the kitchen like watching them, and I did it through high school. I just like had it like an affinity. I don't know why I loved the lunch ladies. They were funny, and they made. I mean, it was Kentucky. It wasn't like. As my husband says, like, is there anything in Kentucky that doesn't have cheese on it? Um, you know, even back then, it was like, you know. But it was, it was, it was fun. It was a fun education. So, so some of the recipes in in the book are like my what I wish things tasted like. Like there were some things that were just not right. Not right. How unbelievable is that for you to have had that experience, and then for you to do what you do today? I know it's kind of it's, it's. I always feel like with a lot of it, everything's full circle in life. Absolutely, absolutely. I do remember my mom once packed me brown swagger. Now that we're releasing all of our inner memories, <laughs> um, I do remember one uh, sandwich of brown swagger that I refused to eat. I, I think I actually had a hunger strike for about 20 minutes. <laughs> is that like a liverwurst? What is that? I don't know. It's brown swagger, and the name alone made me want to You're like, no. <laughs> so did yeah. we pick a winner? I wanted to know if we picked oh, a winner. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I, 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 I did, and then, hold on. Hold on one second. I did. I told her. Melissa Taylor, who's at Dessert Chic. Oh, awesome. We she love Melissa. Regular love friend of the show. Woo. Oh, good. F-O-K-P. F-O-K-P, friend of Kitchen Party. No. Right. <laughs> Kitchen Party that sound, Nation. That sounds very dangerous. <laughs> right. T Tamara on um, on Google Plus says, do you ever let your kid... Did I ask you this question? Has the, has the gin and tonic... Taken effect. It says, did you ever let your kids buy lunch at school? Did I already ask that question? No. IDK. Okay, good. <laughs> For some reason, I think I read it a few times in my head, and I'm thinking, oh, I got to ask this question before we before we log off, and I forget it. So anyway, I got to tell you, I love it when you drink. Speak amongst <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so, do you ever let your kids buy a lunch, or do you make them lunch all the time? I make them lunch five days a week, but it's, I mean, my son actually brought it up and we were at dinner one night and he's like, you know, you can buy lunch like at, at school. And I was like, oh, okay. And he was like, yeah, but I, I don't want to do that. And I was like, okay. I mean, I, I try to be, and they have pizza Fridays during school. So they, you know, that's sort of like his day that they, you know, they have pizza Fridays. Um, but, you know, I think that if they ever wanted to buy it, I would be uh, totally open to it. I just think, I, I don't know, maybe because my kids have sort of grown up with this, like, they don't even want to go out to eat. They, like, I'll be like, who wants to go out to dinner? They're like, let's just stay home. Like, when I was a kid, I remember being like, let's go, let's go out, let's go out. But, you know, they like staying home. Absolutely. So we have a second book to give away. Should we do, should we do a call on, guys? Sure. See sure. if anyone calls in. Sometimes we have this thing. Okay, Catherine, this is like a thing that we always test, and we're always like, we're not sure how this is going to work. Okay, for those of you who are watching at home, 
we want you to call this number from your home phone. We won't see the number. Don't worry about it. Not, your privacy will be totally cool. And it is not video. It is only audio. It's only we your voice. We will be giving it to Anthony Weiner. <laughs> <laughs> Do not text. Ew. Ew. <laughs> no pictures. Um, so you want to uh, call us at 310. 601-4017 during the show, the live show, not the rebroadcast. Um, <laughs> if this is after August 22nd, do not call. <laughs> you will be calling my home. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not my home number. I'm totally kidding. Call 3 a.m. Um, Pacific. Call, call us. Call us and ask a question. It could be really any question, but it has to be a question that's related to lunch in some capacity. Um, so if you're watching at home and you can win, uh, please give us a call because we would love to talk to you. And then Melody will, our producer, will put up a sign when your call comes in. It'll flash. We're getting a call, and so we all kind of the group knows. Um, but if we're in the middle of saying a sentence, just know, give us some time, and it, it may ring a couple times. Um, and we Can want, I bring I up also, a point while we're waiting? Yes. Um, I, I have a stainless steel frizz just like you. It's not as cool as that. You know, yours is like the RV. Mine's you know, like a bicycle bill for two. Oh. But I think it's terrible what they've done because we used to put the kids' drawings and photos and fingerprints and footprints. We don't have an avenue for that, and that's yes. why Facebook is popular. Wait a minute. You ready? Whoa. Wow. You find... Instead of spending money on posters or art, you just make a wall collage. Yeah, but kids cost a lot of money, <laughs> eventually. Let me tell you something. I, those art classes, I could have a Picasso. <laughs> okay, but we, do have a, we do have a phone call coming in. Woo! -woo! Hello, and welcome to Kitchen Party. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hello? Hello. Hi, this is Kim Watkinson. Hey, hey what's up? Hi. <laughs> I'm so happy that um, Catherine is here today. I um, I saw her at Blog Her Food 12. Yeah. And um, I I was just so appreciative of all the uh, information she she gave us. But I also want to know if she's still making her peanut butter panini sandwiches. Yes, I love the world's greatest PB and J. Um, yes. yes, I'm telling you, any peanut butter and jelly makes everything better with a little bacon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, so, Kim, do you make? Do you have children? I do not, but I have. I only, only the furry kind, but I do have nieces and nephews, and they do appreciate the bento boxes that I've made for them when they are um, visiting. <laughs> so sweet. That's so nice. I love to hear that. That's awesome. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a message through Google Plus with just making sure I get your address, and we'll get you the book right away. Um, I'll send it to Catherine, and we'll we'll process that. So thank you so much for calling and being and being adventurous. Thank you, and and Catherine for Ford and for all her good parenting and bringing sweet children into the world, and you too, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you too, Jeff. <laughs> Wow. Hey, 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 Kim, are you drinking anything tonight? <laughs> you too, uh, Jeff. No, actually, just... Uh, <laughs> that was sober. <laughs> English breakfast tea. <laughs> English breakfast tea. Well, here, here's to you. Cheers. Yes. Cheers to you. Cheers. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for calling. We'll see you later. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. So, and once again, a reminder for those of you who want to submit a recipe. I'm hearing a, I'm hearing a melody. I think your audio is... There oh, it's you go. fixed. Perfect. Um, for those of you who want to submit a recipe for our community cookbook on Bakespace.com, remember uh, bit.ly slash kp lunch is where you submit your recipe. Um, we do have Kim, uh, Kim Pebley also said, Fab Kitchen Party, I'll definitely try the sushi, the sushi sandwiches in the kiddos bento boxes next week. Yay! That's a wonderful That's idea. I'm just going to make sure we're going through all of our um, Melissa Taylor, Dessert Chick, and I, I didn't realize I, I when I was looking on Twitter, I had top. I did not have all. So if I missed any tweets, I'm really sorry about that. Um, but I think that is it. Oh, here, uh, Tammy uh, Thoughtsgasm said, at what age is appropriate to make your kids make your lunch instead of the other way around. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I'm into that program. <laughs> I'm going to retweet that right now. <laughs> yes. And I think I said dessert chic. It is dessert chic. Sorry. That's close enough. Look, look, kitchen, with Kitchen Party, there is a thing where we can say names wrong. <laughs> we just have to blame the alcohol. It's a hallowed tradition. 
And Rob, uh, Rob Greenwood, who is Life is Dad One on Twitter, says really enjoying Kitchen Party tonight. Um, and then also Tammy Thoughtsgasm on Twitter says if you have more than one kid, have them make each other's lunch as punishment. <laughs> that would be torture. <laughs> that's br that's what my kids would go through. I'm going to. I'm going to star that and as a favorite right now. Oh, we just lost, we just lost Jeff. Oh, we he'll, just lost he'll, Jeff. He'll be did back. We, he'll be did back. we get the question answered? What age is the age that you start? Uh, I think it's, it, it depends on, um, you know, for, I mean, for a lot of parents, it's daycare. It's, I mean, it's 12 months, 14 months. It really depends your, you know, your, your schedule, your life. You know, basically, I mean, like I said, I make my husband's lunch and he takes it to work. Um, so if you know whether it's daycare or going to work or eating at home, um, there is something great though about a child's lunch. You know, for what, or, or an adult's lunch, just that ownership over a lunchbox. There's just something that feels um, I don't know very personal about it. You know, we're going to be close. When does the oh, time come where you, where they're in charge of making their own lunch? I think it changes for away. every child. I mean, their interests. Um, I mean, I, my son's six and a half. I could see him making his own. I mean, he, he helps me now. He's he's really gotten into, because I just got my copy of the book. And so right. he's been going through and putting, um, He want, he's like told me what he wants to make. So, <laughs> like, okay. Oh, my gosh. I just thought of the best idea, Jeff and Renee. We should get Catherine and J.M. Hirsch together in a show and do I like a you. lunch off. Right. <laughs> like you they have to it'd be like, okay guys, here's your ingredient. Uh liverwurst and see in their mind what they would prepare. It's a kitchen party chopped. <gasps> we Ooh, gotta do I like that. that. Okay, that's that's what we're gonna do because he's I'm into he's, it. He's awesome. No, I think his I think his son is like is he nine and he's <clears throat> I think he makes him his lunch still. Um yeah. but he likes really fancy stuff, that kid. Uh, that kid I I think he needs to be studied because he's absolutely adorable, like this child taste. wears a monocle. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, we're going to be ending in just a second. Um, Catherine, I, there's one question I am dying to know. I want to know what your kids' lunch boxes look like. Do you have them oh, yeah. there? I mean, well, I made the one. Yeah, I've got... Um, so... Like every time you open that refrigerator, I hear like the angels sing. Like, la, la, la. I feel like you're gonna. I think you're gonna like tear a rotator cuff because it's like the door from you know Damascus. <laughs> Look at that. Um, Where does that fit in a bag? The lot. Yeah, yeah. It has its own case. Um, <laughs> I can show you. I mean, I, yes. I, I, I want to. Awesome. I want to see that. Really? It looks okay. like the Millennium Falcon lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna make her go all through her kitchen and pull That's everything out? Yeah, the um, the uh, I think what happens is is the 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 stainless steel refrigerator gives birth to little baby lunch boxes, <laughs> and then they go out and they populate the world and make more stainless steel refrigerators. It's a it's a theory of mine. I'm staying with it. Okay, so this is a planet box and lunch tomorrow, and it's. Stainless steel. Catherine, can you lift it a little bit higher over the uh, the bottom third? There, there you go. Sweet. Yeah, you're never going to get that past the TSA. That's like a modern, <laughs> like, those cake. dinner plates. <gasps> oh, Ooh, oh, oh. Aliens. Yeah. Very cool. Ooh. So nice. <laughs> you can put, like, an ice pack in here. And I always keep, like... Uh, I always said I wasn't a parent. I was an ice manager. <laughs> Uh, butterfly keep, like, eyes. Is that like booze manager? <laughs> well, later in life. <laughs> and then this is a laptop box. Let's see. Laptop nice. boxes. And it's, uh, you know, they have... You know, the most insidious thing that KFC ever did was when they created the laptop kids meals. My son went nuts when he saw kids with those, and I'm like, no, we're we're staying and we're waiting until KFC does like the iPad meal. We're, we're holding out. That hurts my feelings. <laughs> you Lunchables are... hurt my feelings. Yeah, oh yeah, those are those are hate crimes. Right? I think I just saw something that there's like a competitor to Lunchables something. You something did. It was in it was at, in the New York Times today or yesterday. I believe it's called manure. No. <laughs> It's these two women that get in Orange County, and they're making lunches. They're making like 
healthier Lunchables. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> there goes Jeff, that level, Sue. Jeff, grab your foot. Yes. Grab your foot. Oh, I'm sorry. It's in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You know, hey, next week, I just want to tell the folks who are watching, um, Hopefully you're all still watching. Um, like tweet us if you're watching. Use the kitchen party hashtag and let us know you are still watching. Uh, <laughs> next week is our um, is I, I think that is it's oh wait no it's not our anniversary thing. Next week is a movie snack show. So basically uh, we are going to be doing snacks that you want to do for movie night like family time so family recipes things that you can you know you're watching TV because all these new shows are coming back um, and so uh, start watching the stream because we're gonna put a link to add a recipe to like your favorite movie time snack um, to that cookbook that we make and we're gonna actually get some folks from our audience to join us on the show too so if you are a parent and you want to join us on the show Send us a tweet, and we will invite you to be part of the show next week. And then we do have a, a show coming up next month, which is our reu like our one-year anniversary show. This is crazy. This is like every week for an entire year we've been getting together, and you've been joining us, and we've appreciated you being part of the Kitchen Party. Um, <laughs> hey, when are we doing the Breaking Bad cookbook? <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> you know, I've never seen an episode of that. I got, I got, I got to make one. Oh, you got to catch up. Is it like heroin and stuff like that, like crazy stuff? Meth. Oh, it's much better, much better. better. Oh, meth. Oh, the, the good stuff. Okay, good. All right, good. guys. So, Catherine, when can we expect to see you back on Kitchen Party? Like, when when will you have some more <laughs> news? <laughs> we're, we're, we're already... <laughs> what is your credit card number? What is... <laughs> should, should on, at the beginning Any of next time year? Anytime you want. Awesome. All right. Well, we appreciate that's the your right time. answer. <laughs> we, we appreciate that's the right answer. Let's see, Renee knows. Um, and next time, you know what? Next time we'll have to we'll have to figure out a cocktail to all make something, or maybe we can do it all like together. The three of us can meet well, in LA. I love and that. We, can, we, we can should drink Jeff. kitty cocktails. We should all make like Shirley Temples and things like that, man. Kitty cocktails. That's a good I, one. It's a I good think one. that's the next Wheelicious book. Yes, <laughs> kitty cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> that's for my children. Maybe <laughs> You know, my boyfriend's probably watching this, and he's probably like, okay, my future wife will want my children to drink, will not feed them lunches, and will abandon them. <laughs> we'll force them to make each other's lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can always make lunches for the cats, Bubba. They can make me lunch. That's the reason why you have children, is to make you lunches. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you later. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you next week. Remember, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Every Thursday we are here. Uh, BakespaceTV.com is where you can find our full schedule. And also on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, wherever the subscribe button is. I'm not, I'm not familiar with YouTube that much. So I'm always like, where is our subscribe button? So join us. <laughs> Ooh, say hi to the cat. We're voting. Look at that face. Subscribe because you want oh, this cat yeah. to be happy. Subscribe or this cat gets it. <laughs> this cat gets it. No, I would never do that. Oh, no, I lost my earpiece. I would. All right, well, I can't hear you guys, so close this out, Jeff. Say something funny. Uh, my mother emails to say, liverwurst, a.k.a. Braunschweiger, exclamation, 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 exclamation. Is she watching I'm Kitchen Party? Kidding. Oh, she watches like a hawk. She's waiting for me to say something terrible about her food. What's your mom's name? Kitty. Kitty, this show is dedicated to Kitty. Oh. Cheers, Mom. All right, guys. And, and liverwurst. We will see. Oh, oh, Catherine, where where can folks find you too? Let them know about the website and and um, and where can they find the book too? Yes, Wheelicious.com, and the book comes out September third. You can pre-order it now, but it can be at your doorstep September third. Awesome. And we, we will add those links to the YouTube channel. Yes. We will add those to the blog post and also yes. on our our Google event page. It's also on there too. So right. thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so you guys. You guys right, are guys. fun. We will see you later. Bye. 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 That's so loud. I don't need that ultrasound anymore. Oh, I thought of a new dance. I was like, I don't want I was going to stand up and do a little. It's like the gopher from Caddyshack. It is the caddy shack dance. <laughs> I should get the cat to dance. No, you shouldn't.
<laughs> hey, that could be our YouTube thing. Cat dancers. <laughs>